Okay, we're back here at Beamer Sun Garage. Uh, we just got done with the grill. You saw the installation of the 74 Plymouth Duster, what we call Dusty. Now we're going to work on our van here. This is our six cylinder. Come on in here, son. This is our six cylinder uh, convertible van uh, that we're working on. And uh, we're going to go ahead and open up the top. Right on the other side over there and open that door up, son. Huh? Okay, Dad. Open this video a little bit. Open that door up. Turn her into the car will she is. Kind of binding here. There's something under there. That's uh, hitting it. Okay, now go. There we go. All the way down. Okay. Now we got a convertible. We love our open carriage car. We got two of these. We got a 66 Bonneville convertible and we got the 63 bank. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do the oil change on it. Uh, over here is our provisions. Uh, we have a uh, we have the vest, uh, Wix oil filter, and my son went and got some Valvoline uh, racing oil. This has uh, zinc in it. This is a VR1 Valvoline, a 20W50. And then we got a treatment we put to it with some STV, which is a little bit more zinc added to it. So that's what we got here. We got our oil, we got our filter. Uh, we bought some of the best. I don't know about Valvoline being the best, but it's uh it's got zinc in it good oil if you change it properly the old babbling of the old days if you didn't change it right it'd sludge up you'd get a motor full of sludge and we got a uh a really fancy lincoln battery powered grease gun for the grease fittings uh to do a proper oil change you need to grease it too uh, also you need to have these gloves on right here to keep the oil off your hands the old oil uh because it mixes with the the, uh, actually the combustion chamber it's a it's a uh, carbon that produces uh, from the combustion chamber which dirties the oil that's why the oil turns black people is uh, the carbon that's uh, produced in the actual combustion chamber of uh, the piston coming up compression uh, and it's building up uh, pressure inside the cylinder when then of course the valve opens up lets a little fuel and air in there then the spark plug ignites it once the piston gets to the top of that center compresses all that and the spark plug ignites inside that cylinder and it blows the cylinder down and that gives you your power it's called a power stroke people and uh so a fellow uh gets uh the oil gets black because of the carbon that's produced from the, the actual combustion uh, that's why this engine and all engines that run on gasoline is an internal combustion engine so that oil uh the old oil will have carbon in it and you don't want to get that on your hands that causes skin cancer okay so what we got here with the oil change we got a drain pan we got an oil filter wrench for the oil filter. The oil filter's up on top. And down here is where the drain pan and the drain plug is. So come on over here, son. Oil filter on top. Yeah, yeah come on over here. Okay, Dad. And we're going to have to get down here on the ground with it. That's where the oil change is. Oh, we got a, we got a friendly down here. And we got an adjustable wrench. Here around here, we call it a Danny wrench. Named after the most famous guy, Danny Ross. So, uh, we'll get it on the drain plug here. And I already pre-loosened it. And we're going to pull the drain plug out and watch all this uh, come out. You can see that oil got all over my hand. But see, I got these gloves on. So it protects my hand. And that's the old nastiness coming out of it. And we're going to drain that all the way out so there's no oil coming out of it. Uh, it sit right there, so okay, Dad. I'm watching the oil.
Now my glove got a tear in it, but I'm not going to replace the glove at this point. You should go ahead and change the, the glove. My, uh, unfortunately, my glove blew out. So I got a blowout right here. <laughs> yeah. We had a blowout, people, on the channel. My glove blew out. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit more oil get out of it. This is just its first oil change since we've owned it. We bought this out of a junkyard. If you guys remember, this car came out of a junkyard. Over there in uh, Glenesty, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, a little junkyard called Crocker Auto Parts. A guy named Richard Crocker had this car. And we bought it from him, and he delivered it. And we got it running. And uh, so here it is. We had it running earlier this morning. The oil's not hot or... It's not stone cold, but it's not uh, it's not really warm. So it'll drip like that all day. I've not got time for that. So I'll just go ahead and stick the plug back in it. Really important to get the the threads back in there right. Started by hand all the way. Another important thing is to have a rag. Wipe up all the droppings around that plug. And of course, any place else where there might be some oil dripping. And we'll finger tight it. And we'll take the adjustable wrench, what we call a dainty wrench around here, and we'll tighten it up. You should have a regular wrench to do this with. Don't do what I do. <coughs> Just do what I say. <laughs> and there's our own oil coming out of there. Oh yeah, black gold Texas tea. And uh, well, she's black. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's thing overdue for an black oil change. Black oil matters. <laughs> At least it doesn't have gas in it, and it doesn't have water in it. So there's a plus. That's a plus. And up on top, this has a strange oil filter. Um, where's the other drawer? Oh, that's both of them. Yeah, I put them both together, Dad, for you. Here's the new tools we got here. Got for Christmas. This came from AutoZone. And it's a heart. Right there's the name. And the bowling ball here. You can see, keeps the lid from flopping all the way down. Now the bowling ball actually serves a purpose. <coughs> and it's a nice little set. Over here we got our uh, 3 8 drive set up and some quarters and a little ratchet extension. All your sockets and your half inch drive, your 3 8 And it's a nice little set. So, But over here with our oil filter here, this filter is inverted upside down. Instead of being screwed up, it goes this way. So we got to position the oil pan to catch that oil. I don't want oil leaking into the earth. So we're going to turn this here. I've already pre loosened it. But it still couldn't move by hand. And that dipstick's coming with it. Put that back in. Okay. And we'll just unscrew the filter. And there it comes off. And it's just leaking everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It just leaked everywhere. Yeah, you tried. But a pain was underneath catching most of it. So. And that's the old filter. And it was a, uh, a cheapy power flow. Huh. Never heard of it. But... Well, we got we got the good the stuff for it. This is the best oil filter money can buy, people. Uh, 
The other filters are pretty good. For M and M, they're pretty good. But in our opinion, this is the best. Wix is one of the best filters out there on the market. It's the most expensive, and we feel it's the best. So we're going to uh, put some oil in it, and then we're not going to put much because most of it's going to just run straight out. We'll put a little dab on the gasket there, yeah. on a little O-ring, and of course it's stupid to try to fill this up and put it in there because it's going to run straight out. Because of the way this filter runs, it's, it's uh, upside down. Yeah. <coughs> Another thing is, come over here and show the house in there. Yeah, check that out. Another good thing to do is to take a clean rag, one that don't have dirt on it. Exactly. Good example. Yeah. A yeah. brand new red rag, and you're going to wipe this housing right here. We wipe all that dirt off of it, all that old used oil. We're going to get all that out of there. And then we're going to install the new one. And I'm kind of a perfectionist. I want it just so, just, just so. If it's not, I'm not happy. You can see why I didn't put a lot of oil in it. I turned it upside down and just going to run right out. And again, you want to start this by hand. And it's all wet and oily and slimy. And you want to just put the filter down to where the gasket touches. Then you want to go about mm, three quarters of a turn, hand tight. And get it good and hand tight. You don't take a, an oil filter wrench and crank that uh, down. Okay, so we're ready for oil. We'll put our oil on it. Yep, got the oil the oil filter in, got the plug in, got the oil drained. Now it's throwing the oil in. Maybe put the oil now. Got some Valvoline going on there. Yeah. Some racing oil. Yeah. Valvoline racing oil. Now you should get a funnel. Uh, but a guy here can. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take my finger and I'll put my finger over it. And I'll stick it in the hole. And I didn't spill a drop. I've been doing this for about 35 years. So I, I, I did spill a little bit. Not much to even talk about. But we did lose a little bit. So we need to throw a garbage can over here. We didn't get a garbage can over here. We'll get it here in a minute. And same thing, finger. And put it in a hole. Boom. I could go get a funnel, but by the time I get a funnel, I'll have the wood in it. The time you walk and try to find a funnel, and, and then you got to wipe the funnel out and clean it. And the time you do throw all that off, I'll have the whole change done. This is the third uh, quart already. We're going to put five in it, and we'll check it. There's three. Oh, I spilled some one time. Feel a little bit more than normal. That happens sometimes. Ah, it keep it from rusting. Ah, it's preservative, Dad. Preservative. There's four. Yeah, the wool actually is preservative. You can't it can't rust if it's got a wool on it, people. Okay, so I'll go with this one. And we didn't spill none on that one, so yeah, the fifth one we we did good on. It's high in zinc right here. You can see right there it says high in zinc. Which is what you want for an older engine it's, like this. Yeah, you want to have that to protect the camshaft. So that's five quarts in it. And a little extra on the valve cover, it's not going to hurt nothing. So there's our oil changes done. And we'll... Put the empty quartz uh, in the garbage here. So there's that. So the oil change is done. We have an extra quart left over for in between. In between oil changes. And one oil change done.
I've seen a lot of people do it, and uh, they really just, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say they do it the wrong way, but they just make a mess. And then, of course, you got the STC oil treatment. <coughs> and uh, we're gonna save that for another oil change. We're not gonna use the STP. I don't think we need it because we've got the zinc oil in it right now. So uh, there's that. And we've got these pans that we gotta deal with now. The green pans. They got oil, oil filter. That'll be for another episode. That'll probably dispose of your used oil. What I'll do is I'll find a jug and I'll pour the used oil into a jug and then I save the used oil. That's what I'll do. Like a jug like this over here. A couple of them right here. I always got uh, always got these laying around. works with just the new setup. Yeah, I'm gonna get up on them. I'll make a mess all over the place. But that's for another issue. That's for another episode. <laughs> we'll do that another time. Okay, right now we're gonna grease this uh, Plymouth Valiant with our Lincoln uh, fancy grease gun here that my son bought me. And uh, you can go to the front there, son. I should be able to go to the back. Tell everybody how it's done. Okay. In the front? Ah, uh, yeah. Over here. Uh, okay, first of all, you need a rack to wipe off all the, the grease fittings. So you want to wipe the fitting off, stick your gun on it, pull the trigger. Boom. Boom. Another one down there. Another one bites the dust. And that one. You don't want to put a lot in it. You don't want to blow the boot. You're just going to shoot some grease in it, you know. You don't want it to run dry. And when there's kind of an angle, it looks like. I don't know if I can really get that one very good. Yep, got it. And there should be a fitting at the bottom. Bottom ball joint. I should be. Yep, right there. Take a rag, wipe off the fitting again. And then get it on the grease fitting. Kind of got to feel it because I can't really see it from over here. It didn't go to to lose that around it. Uh, I didn't see it too much. There should be a grease fitting at the top, and there is. Oh, just in case, just to let you guys know. Also, remember to like, tag, and subscribe to Beamer and Sun Garage. There should be a grease fitting over here at the top, and there is. She's got uh, quite a few grease fittings on her. Okay, got the top one. I don't know how good I got that bottom one because I really can't see. I don't know if I got that bottom one at all. Did go in or did it just ooze out around or something? Uh, looks like it just oozed out around. I don't think you got the bottom one too good, but you know. Okay, let me do it again. See, I didn't see it ooze out the top. Uh, well, she had been greased forever. Yeah. You know she thinks we're done. And this is the first kind of love it's seen in a long yeah, time. Yeah, I, I got it that time. Yep. You got it that time. Yeah. Okay, so we got the tie rod here, the st steering pitman arm here. Uh, that's the inner, that's the outer, and upper and lower ball joint on this side. And we'll just back up over to here, and we'll do this side over here. You can stay right where you're at. And uh, this here will have an idler arm. <laughs> Which is what this is. It'll have an inner tie rod. 
Do they got a fitting there? No, uh, there. no that's just a cotter pin. That's There's a, a fitting right here, pin. Dad. And the other fitting there, that's yeah. the other end of the uh, idle arm. And we'll have one end of the tie rod, another one there, and another one top of the ball joint. So then we'll uh, freeze all that. Uh, we'll go with this idle arm first. Ooh, it really oozed out. A little bit too much, probably. Yeah, you can see it ooze out right there. I got some grease there. I didn't get that one. Sometimes you gotta turn the wheel uh, on these. Got that one. Got that one. Now the top here. We're gonna go to the top here. At the top. Where the ball joint is all the way at the top. And we're gonna try to get the upper ball joint. That's gonna be a real difficult task. Ooh. And that's it. <clears throat> There's probably a couple things we didn't get very good. Probably the outer tie rod there. I don't know if I can do a better job with it and try to get it again. Which, you know, I'm going to try. Unfortunately, I'm a perfectionist. And it's got to be... It's got to be great. Just so, huh, Dad? <laughs> and, uh... There we go. <laughs> didn't really do a good job I think I might have shot some in there okay. that's good enough so I think I'm good with that and that's a all change in move job what they call yeah. LOF and the automotive industry that's an LOF lube oil and filter yep <clears throat> and always you put your tools away, people. Don't delay. If you don't, if you don't put your tools away, then when you need them the next time, you won't. The guy won't know where you put them at. So you put your tools away. And this here is about a four hundred dollar grease gun here. So this uh, this piece, the old way I used to do it, because I took a hand crank, you know, grease gun and had to pump that thing uh, with my hands, and it was it was a real pain. When you're all done, you should be able to take your gloves off. And you can see here, this one here blew out. And that one there. So, yeah, those gloves are, are worth their weight in gold around here. Uh, better ones are black and they're a little tougher. These are just some cheapy gloves that I got off of a, a, a local uh, dollar store. So, But that's it for today. we got our oil change done. Uh, got her grease, got, got her oiled, got her lubed up, got the oil change done, and that's yeah. it for this uh, this episode of Beamer Sun Garage. How to change your own oil. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, you know, back in the day, my father had his own way of doing it, and he would take the oil filter off uh, and the oil plug out, and he would start the engine up. And uh, actually, no, he'd leave the oil filter on it. He'd leave the oil filter on, pull the drain plug on, and then he'd start it up, let it run for a second. Then he shut it down, and his thing was he got more oil out of it. Well, what he did was he basically pumped the oil that was in the filter through the system, and that was the more oil he got out. But my father was my father, you know, a great man, Ron Beamer, uh, from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, brick hauling, uh, and blood. Uh, been since the 1800s, my family's all brick. So I come from a long line of truck drivers and. Of course, them truck drivers were owner-operators. They had to fix their own uh, trucks and 
repair them. And uh, I've learned a lot of my skills from my father and my grandfather. So we don't do it like that. You seen how we do it? We take the filter off. We got uh, you know put oil in the filter. We install it. We put the oil back in the motor. Tied the drain plug up for that. And then you know wipe everything off, grease it. And that's an LOF here at Beamer and Sun Garage. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to, uh, like my son said, like, tag, and share. And please subscribe and tell your family, friends, neighbors, co-workers about us. You know, we're a new channel. We've only been doing this for years, so we've got a lot of content. We've got a lot more stuff to show you here on this channel. So please, please subscribe. We've got 301 subscribers, and we're looking to get more. And we appreciate every one of you subscribers. And we'll see you next time at Beamer and Sun Garage. And don't forget, it's Beamer and Sun Garage forever, and the rest never. We'll see you next time, people. Bye for now.